Amen. Joining us now is what? The third musketeer, would that be uh, accurate yep. with these guys? <laughs> My wife would be the fourth. The fourth, <laughs> fourth musketeer. musketeer. But from Laguna Beach, founder and chairman of New Life Ministries, host of the number one nationally syndicated Christian counseling show. Really, and you guys are a part of the New Life Live now, and founder of Women of Faith Conferences, Steve Arterburn. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And you guys hosted and co-hosted a program on TBN for many years. What was that Four called? Four years. Yeah. Uh, just Josh McDowell. Okay. Well, and imagine this, you know, uh, when I was in college, Josh came and spoke, and I think you were just starting out, and it was, you know, just revolutionary in my life. And then uh, I was able to sit with him and, and be his co-host on these programs. And yeah. so I learned so much from him. Now, here I am with John and Henry, and every <laughs> weekday I get to be with them. So I, I think God is putting all these people around me because he finally wants me to get it. <laughs> That's right. But, yeah. Good. But I, I am so fortunate to have worked with so many great people, and, and Josh has just meant so much to me. Yeah, to all of us. Now, you were just saying, though, that even in tonight's program with the two guys that were here, you've learned something new even tonight. There were two or three things that I learned that maybe you could explain a little more detail biblically. Uh, after I talked to Dottie and my children, the next person I called was Steve. Because mm -hmm. of my respect, knowing him over the years, he lived close, went over, and he immediately said yes. And we sat down. And the first was this, Steve, that I walked away that I wasn't used goods. What's the significance of that? Well, to me, um, we often wear the shame of another person. You mm -hmm. didn't do anything shameful, but someone did something shameful to you. And so in the eyes of the Lord, you are pure. Um, another example of this, I see so many uh, young women that get pushed into an abortion. Mm -hmm. And I, I paid for an abortion when I was in college. Mm -hmm. But I see them going through life... Uh, with the guilt of abortion, but maybe it was their mother that took them there and said, this is going to happen to you. And so they didn't have an abortion. They had an abortion done to them. But if, if Satan can get us to believe that we're used goods, if he can get us to wear the shame of another person, then he has a tremendous victory on his hands. But look what you've done, Josh, when you finally realized that this isn't only a part of your history, but it was going to be part of your Future. future. And yeah. you became willing to share it. So many people have been impacted by it. And if you just continue to walk around like you were leftovers or used goods, I don't think that ever would have happened. So God has redeemed the most evil thing, I think, that can happen to a person. He has redeemed it through you because of your willingness to step beyond being a second class or used good person. Yeah. You know, I think if, yeah. if Steve hadn't helped me there, if he hadn't helped me there to see that in the scripture, looking at myself as damaged goods would have had to have affected my marriage oh, mm -hmm. sure. and my relationship. Well, the other you taught that also helped me that I'm not a victim. You choose to be a victim right. and I chose not to be a victim. You, you are quite victorious over <laughs> the things that happened to you. There's a thing called learned helplessness where a person, something happens and then they set themselves up for something else to happen and you look at their life and it's just they're victim after victim. But you had the truth to stand on. Amen. And I believe that's why you continued to minister is because that truth was in your heart. And if it hadn't been, I think your life would have been extremely different. Well, you've talked about in some of your writings and books that healing is a choice. That's right. Talk about that. Well, you know, at the pool of Bethesda, uh, Jesus walks up to a man who's been laying there or he's, he's been unable to walk for 38 years. Right. And he asks him a question. Here he is at a healing pool and he says, do you want to be well? Do you want to be healed? So obviously there is, is mm. some uh, dimension of choice for us. But I think Ooh. there are many choices that we make. Probably the biggest is the choice to connect with other people. Okay. Our ministry is about connection. And when we do our conferences, uh, the thing that people say that means the most to them is to get out of their isolation and finally connect with other people. Of course, right. you've got people married that aren't even 
connected to each other. Right, right. But here's the other thing. In Romans 12, too, it says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, one translation reads, by changing the way that you think. Don't conform to the world, but be transformed by changing the way that you think. And I think that's what happened to you, Josh, is that you changed the way you thought about yourself, and that had a transforming effect on him. Now the secret becomes the opportunity to minister to him. Here again, without the body of Christ, mm -hmm. without Dottie, without Henry, without Steve, and Dick Day, mm -hmm. I don't think I could have done that. Uh, I, I, first of all, I was so emotionally hurt, I couldn't understand truth. Now that sounds crazy, yeah. but my emotions overrode the truth that I knew even yeah. about the yeah. scripture. That's right. The other is, you told me, oh boy, this scared me. Remember you said, Josh, you need to share it with others oh. publicly. That's scary. I never had for years, up yeah. until two and a half years ago. Why'd you tell me that? Well, just from my own life where I've been able to open up about the abortion that I, I paid for, uh, if I didn't open up about that, it would have all been lost. Satan would have had the victory. Mm -hmm. But when I began to talk about it and encourage people to think before they make that kind of decision, now victory comes or the beauty comes out of the ashes. And I knew that if you shared this secret that thousands millions of people were going to be helped because of the pain and agony that you went through. And so that what Satan meant for evil was truly going to be transformative right. in the body of God. Right. That's good. I walked out of there with a verse, he will cause all things to work together for the good. Amen. And I remember Steve pointing out to me, what happened to you was not good but he can even take that mm -hmm. and cause it to work for the good. Amen. And I look back now because God used people to give me the ability to trust Christ more yeah. and to share this. I've been able to help so many people. Yeah, you're on mission, Josh. And uh, that's the, the thing that, that the guys in the scripture that were after God's heart or were favored by God, they were on mission. You, you know, Abraham prostituted his wife two times. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> David committed adultery and murdered. Mm -hmm. why, why are these people that God didn't give up on? Because right. they were on mission. They had a missional life. Well, what you've done is you created a new mission mm -hmm. for yourself and, and new value and worth comes from that mission. I think one of the biggest, uh, the saddest things in the church is that people are ashamed that they have had something happen that it wasn't instantly healed. Mm -hmm. And so they, in their silence, they grow old and, and rot and, right. and lose the joy of their salvation. Amen. When if we could allow them to be open and honest about it, then once again, Satan, his victory is destroyed. Yeah, preach it brother, preach it. That's good. That'll preach right there. Yeah. Isn't, isn't one of the lies that you hear the fact that uh, come on, guys, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm the only one that's dealing with this or this or this. Yeah. So yeah. you have no idea. Right. Well, it comes in many forms, but uh, <laughs> what that is is stubborn resistance. Uh -huh. You know, that is a way of remaining a victim and a, a, a way of isolating yourself and not opening yourself up to healing. You know, you can be aware of your problem. You can desire for it to get better. But if you don't go that third step, and become willing, humbly willing to accept help, you're stuck. You've, yeah. you've got to rut for the rest of your life. But it's when we go from desire and awareness to finally, I am willing to surrender this to God. I can't do it, God can, and I'm gonna let him do it. And that's when the healing begins. Yeah. Do you see this often? Uh, I shared here earlier and I still see consequences in my life that I'm in a room alone just focus writing whatever and a man walks into that room yeah mm -hmm. there's just that I just instantly five six seven seconds or whatever just yeah. I can't explain it just like a fear grips me yeah. and it seems to go away yeah 
Uh, if somebody comes up and they go like this, okay. Mm -hmm. But if someone comes out like this and they start mm -hmm. rubbing right. when they pray for you, all these images yeah. come back. And sometimes Satan works with me saying, well, you know, you're really not trusting Jesus. You, you need to give more of your life to Christ. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you haven't really gotten victory over it right. yet. John 10:10. Yeah. 10. The thief comes to destroy Amen. and to kill, but I have come to give you life and give it more. Amen. Amen. And so, so um, there is some residue sure. from what happened that's going to surface from time to time, and Satan is going to invite you mm -hmm. to dwell on that and focus on that while the Holy Spirit is moving you toward, right out in five seconds, right out of it to where you can relax back into the fact that, hey, you're not a victim and uh, you're not a little boy anymore. You have control of your life. And you well, a phrase that has helped me mm -hmm. is that I'm not what I ought to be, but I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> and by the grace of God, I'm not what I'm going to be. Right. That's the prayer and of Sam Shoemaker. I mean, I'm 71 years old. Yeah. And this is my 50th year in ministry. I'm still growing. Yeah. Amen. I'm you still are. having to cope with a lot of these issues. And every once in a while, Satan says, Josh, come on, you're, you're not very spiritual, you're not really walking. And then Christians come up and say, well, you know, you need to trust Jesus more. Mm -hmm. And then I react some, I have to admit, and I'll say, what do you think I've been doing That's right. for 60 some years? <laughs> right. you know, I like to point out to people that I don't know of any successful coach who before a game says to his team, all right, guys, let's remember how humiliating we were last <laughs> week. Let's, let's don't forget how we embarrassed our family and, and our school. Get out there and win. No, that isn't what a, a good coach does. Yeah. A good coach encourages you and gets you to believe in yourself. And so whenever the bad coach of life is in there giving you these, these messages that you're not worth it or, hey, come on, you're, you're damaged goods, that is not coming from God. That Amen. is coming from Satan. Amen. That is not the Holy Spirit convicting you. Good. That is Satan trying to stagnate your life. Amen. Amen. How is someone transformed according to Romans 12:2? Well, I believe it's a, it's a process that you have to go through where you, you look uh, at your own heart. The, the Bible says, Lord, keep me from lying to myself. Mm -hmm. I believe you have to look at yourself, uh, see what you can see. I think according to James 5, 16, you have mm -hmm. to open up with another person. And, and then, as Henry said, you've got to be willing to apply the truth of God in your life. Hmm. Just knowing Scripture to know Scripture, you, you, can, you can be an academic and not have God in your life, but you can know all the Scripture in the world. Right. So it's a matter of looking in, seeing what you can see, opening up about that, and then when you finally start to apply the Scripture to your life and you live it, uh, you know, that is when you're free. Oh, I am learning so much tonight, as I'm sure you are too. This is good, but we just have a, a couple of minutes. Again... Just look into this camera here, Steve. People that are struggling, that are hurting, that say, you don't know the abuse that I've dealt with. Yeah. What do you tell them? Well, I know that if you've been through abuse, you, you made some conclusions about yourself and life, that you were worthless or you don't deserve a, a good life or that God is angry at you. And you probably made some vows that you'll never be hurt again or you won't ever let mm -hmm. someone get close to you. And you're living out these false truths, these conclusions and vows in your life. Mm -hmm. And I just want to invite you to ask God to heal your mind. Now, how does that happen? Well, it happens in relationship. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that if you're really struggling right now, that you will make a commitment tomorrow or tonight that you will go and, and meet face to face with someone and connect with them. And, and if not, then online or by telephone, but don't suffer alone. God's truth wants to erase those erroneous conclusions Amen. and wants you to give up those vows Amen. for the truth that He wants in your life. Amen. Amen. Amen.